I've been sick literally all week and I had to film this video three different times. My hot girl summer has been off to a great start, thanks for asking. So summer is finally here and I'm ready because I feel like summer is the time of the year where I personally get the most amount of books read, which in my case is needed because I've only read about like 12 books this year. I also have a amazing mixture of books on this TBR because I am a mood reader so I feel like a lot of the time I need a good mix of books in order to be able to like have a large range in what I'm able to read. That's basically just like a long way of me saying that my TBR is extremely ambitious. I'm really excited to show you guys all the books that I plan on reading. Some of these are going to be rereads, some of these are going to be books that I've never read before. I also have a few series that I'm planning on marathoning and to make it easier for me and for you guys, I like categorize them from fantasy to romance slash contemporary and then like the last category is going to be manga. There's only one manga on there. So I want to say thank you so much to Disney Books for partnering with me for this video and sending over the first two books on this extremely ambitious TBR. The first book I have to show you from them is called Curse of the Spectre Queen and this is by Jenny Elder Moke. The main character in this book is named Samantha Knox and she is in for a rude awakening when her father doesn't return from the Great War. She ends up receiving a really strange package with an even stranger damaged diary inside. That diary then sets these ruthless men on Samantha's tail and she ends up taking her best friend and her childhood crush and running and yes you heard me right childhood crush meaning this is friends to lovers meaning you already have me there her and her friends end up finding out about the ritual to raise the specter queen which is an extremely dark ritual that they plan to stop specter queen is actually the goddess of vengeance and death so obviously her being raised will cause a dangerous, dangerous war. Sam's overall mission is to find a bull car from the Tree of Life in order to save the entire world. This book also takes place in the 1920s, which I think is really, really cool. Overall, this just sounds so good, and I haven't read a good, good, good YA fantasy in a while, and I feel like this one will definitely get me back into the world of YA fantasy. The Spectre Queen is actually able for purchase in hardcover and audiobook right now. All the links for everything will be down below in my description box. And then I have another book to show you guys which is Like Other Girls by Britta London. This one is a contemporary and it comes out August 3rd. After Mara is kicked off of the basketball team she is dying to prove to her coach that she is a good team player and she ends up teaming up with her brother and his best friend in order to join the football team. Because this sets off a chain of events in her small town, four other girls are actually joining the team with her. One happens to be her longtime crush Valentina and then the other is the reason she got kicked off of the basketball team which is basically her long-term nemesis. This is marketed as a coming of age and tearjerker type of story and I love those so much. It makes me feel like I'm just watching a movie but reading it with my own eyes. And I just have a feeling I'm really 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 gonna enjoy this one. So yes, there will also be all the information down below in my description if you are interested in looking at this book. Thank you so much again to Disney Books for partnering with me for this video. I literally cannot wait to read these two books for the summer. All right, let's get into the next few books on my Hot Girl Summer TBR, shall we? Okay, so the first book is called Four for the Wolf and this is by Hannah Witten. I believe this is an adult fantasy romance book and the main character is the first second born daughter in centuries of I believe a royal family and because of this she is supposed to be sacrificed to the wolf that lives in the wilder wood in hopes that he will return their captured gods. However she realizes that the legends might not be what everyone thought they were and the wolf is actually not a wolf at all but a man. And that her magic is not a curse at all but instead a gift. Apparently this is an incredible fantasy and it has really 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 good romance. I've When I tell y'all I've literally heard nothing but good things about this. I've seen it all over Twitter. I've seen so many people talking about it and it just came out like this earlier this month I believe. The little snippet on the back says the first daughter is for the throne, the second daughter is for the wolf. I just love Red Riding Hood. Like I love the story of Red Riding Hood. So I feel like I'm really going to enjoy all the retellings that we've been getting recently. So yes, I can't wait to pick this one up. 
hopefully soon. Next book that I have to show you guys is The Prison Healer and this is by Lynette Noni and I have the beautiful fairy loot edition with like the really pretty sprayed and stenciled edges and the exclusive cover. I have the regular cover of the book so I'll also show that to you guys. This is the regular cover in comparison to the fairy loot cover. The regular cover is still stunning. This one is just purple and it has like the stenciled edges and this one is blue and it has obviously no stenciled edges. I would love to give a synopsis of this book. However, all I really know about it is that it's compared to A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I believe that the main character in this book has to go through trials of some sort and that does happen in A Court of Thorns and Roses so I could see why it would be kind of compared but I've heard raving things about this one as well and I know for a fact I'm probably I'm, I'm probably gonna like it so next book I don't own but it is Legend by Marie Lu. I don't really know anything about this one either I know that I saw a snippet of it on Twitter I don't think I'll be able to find the original tweet but I saw the snippet and it was like this little line and it sounded so good I've been avoiding reading this series for years I just didn't think that it was going to be something that interested me and now I'm kind of regretting that I did that because it sounds so good. I feel like every single time I write off a book and I'm like oh, I'm never gonna read that I see a tweet about that book and I'm like wait a minute I need that expeditiously. The only thing that I know about the book that made me want to read it is the fact that it is like I'm pretty sure like the main character is like a rich girl or like has some sort of notoriety in this world and she falls in love with a wanted criminal I think. I don't know if I'm right or not. If you've read Legend, like, let me know. But I don't want to know too much. I love going into books not knowing too much. But either way, I'm really excited for it. The next one is called Magic Bites, and that is by Alona Andrews. All I know is that in this book, there's a lot of magic and shifters. And I believe these aren't, like, regular shifters, like, werewolf-type shifters. They're more, like lion shifters i don't know what they would be called but i saw a really funny quote from it and it made me want to read it i feel like that's a common theme i see quotes of books or like little snippets and i'm like um that sounds really good i literally used to like look up quotes on goodreads to make me want to read books and i don't know why i stopped doing that because clearly that's the only thing fueling me at this point we all know i love alona andrews that is no secret here on this channel but and there's a big but here this is a 10 book series a 10 book series the authors literally had to be on crack while writing this i don't know how they managed to write a 10 book series and i don't know why i think i can read a 10 book series because i can barely finish the series that i've started now so i'm real bold for putting this one on my list but it's a challenge and i like challenges so we're gonna attempt to do this the next one on my list is a gigantic one and that is lady midnight by the one and only cassandra clare Look at, like, look at how heavy this book is. I think I said in a previous video that I was never going to read this series, or not that I was never going to read it, but that it was not a high priority series for me to get to. But after reading Chain of Iron last year, I completely changed my mind on that. I really do want to read The Dark Artifices. Um, I don't know why I didn't want to read them before. I think I was just really intimidated by them. This series specifically follows the Institute in Los Angeles, whereas the regular Mortal Instruments series follows the Institute in New York. I just think Cassandra Clare is insane for making these books this thick. Like I don't know what she was thinking. This isn't even the biggest one in the series too which is wild to me. But anyways this summer is all about finishing series for me I think. But that's like a big commitment so we'll see. Okay and then the last fantasy-esque book that I want to talk about is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and this is of course by B.E. Schwab. Um to be honest I really want to read this one because of all the pretty editions that have come out for this book but I would feel so wrong buying them if I didn't end up liking the book. Not that that's ever stopped me before but I don't know. I just feel like the editions for this specific like book are so expensive. So you know what? I'm gonna read the book and if I really enjoy it then I will definitely be getting them. This story follows Addie LaRue and she is basically forgotten by every single person that she meets right after she meets them until she ends up meeting a guy who remembers he remembers who she is so obviously that's really shocking to her i don't know much more about the story other than that to be honest i feel like i do kind of know like the ending or what happens but 
I don't fully understand it so I'm okay with that like I don't have a problem reading stories that I kind of know the ending to but yes The Invisible Life of Ada the Rue I am like so behind everyone has read this book everyone has loved it and I want to be on the hype train like I want to see what I'm missing out on moving on we have our romance and contemporary books I feel like contemporary is such a good summer genre like they're just so feel good and cute and I've been wanting to get back on my contemporary wave so the next book I'm going to be talking about is The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. This book is about a politician's daughter and she basically has to erase herself. She's raised herself her entire life until a huge scandal happens and everything basically changes for her. Clearly something happens where she ends up having to walk dogs because that's what's on the cover. I don't know how that ends up happening or what she did to get there. I think it should be a federal crime in booktube law if you like contemporary and you haven't read a Morgan Matson book. So I'm trying to rectify that on my end because I used to love contemporary and I've never read a Morgan Matson book. Pretty big for a contemporary like I'm used to my contemporaries being Casey West kind of short so it might take a little bit for me to get into but overall I'm prepared. The next book I have on my list is actually to finish Dear Aaron by Mariana Zapata. I literally have that, like it says finish Dear Aaron. So the book is about this girl who I believe like signed up for this pen pal website where you can talk to people in the army or so. I don't, I don't really understand like what exactly they signed up for because like I said I started it and I didn't finish. But she is partnered up with this guy named Aaron and they exchange letters and emails and that's kind of how the book is formatted for like majority of the book I want to say for like 40% of the book it's formatted that way and I got about 40% through before I was like okay this format is like driving me insane mostly just because I wasn't used to it but as you read you do get a little bit more used to it I, and I catch myself thinking about those characters and the way that they talk to each other and like the cute little moments that they had just through email before they end up eventually meeting and Oh my god, I honestly am so mad that I stopped reading because I just love Mariana Zapata's writing and even though it is one of her older works, I feel like I would still really really enjoy it if I just read it all the way through. So that is a goal. I'm planning on hopefully picking the rest of the book up soon so I can finish it. Also if you read from Luke Up With Love, Dear Aaron follows Jasmine's older sister. So that kind of like puts it in perspective for you if you kind of remember that book at all. Okay, so the next book is actually a series, not just a single book. And it is the Fall Away series by Penelope Douglas. Oh my god, wait, this is kind of random, but I like got distracted in the viewfinder. Do you guys like my Sailor Moon shirt? Right, Fall Away series, Penelope Douglas. So I'm actually currently marathoning the series. I read the first book, Bully over six years ago. I read the first two books six years ago, which is a long time ago. I think I was like in seventh grade when I read the first two books. My mindset has definitely changed. The way I view things have definitely changed from me being a wee child. Um, but I reread the first book and I did really enjoy it. I'll talk about that more when I do like my wrap up eventually when that happens. I don't know when that will happen. I'm sorry if you've been waiting for one, but I'll definitely do a books I read recently video where I talk about it. And I'm now moving on to the second book, which is called Rivals. I don't remember anything that happens in the second book, but the first book was obviously a uh, bully romance because of the name Bully. <laughs> and I do know that the second book follows the best friend of the main guy character in the first book and this girl that he used to be rivals with until she went away to boarding school and then came back two years later. And now they still have like this like weird rivalry going on. It is new adult, but it takes place in high school. Okay, next up we have Today, Tonight, and Tomorrow. This is by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I like talked about this in a book haul probably months ago. It was a while ago. Everyone in that book haul told me how much they enjoyed this book which is crazy because I hadn't even heard of it until I got a copy of it like I just I'd never seen it anywhere then recently I was really sick like I mentioned in the beginning of this video and I posted on my Instagram story to recommend me some good feel good books so that I could read while I was in bed and I got like a few people telling me to read this so I'm gonna read it <laughs> so this is going to be the last like contemporary slash romance book that I talk about and then I'm gonna get into the manga but the book is called My Darling Arrow and it is by Saffron A. Kent y'all the drama in this book so good I'm actually reading it like right now I like stop reading just to film this video I literally like was reading the book up until setting up my camera like that's how sucked in I am I read this book earlier this year but to be honest I don't remember anything from it. I feel like I just wasn't fully tapped in while I was reading and I hate like reading books 
when I'm not in a reading mood because I feel like I just don't retain anything from it. But let me tell y'all about what the synopsis is for this book, okay? It's in her St. Mary Rebel series, I believe it's what it's called. These girls are sent to a reform school because they are just that bad. Like they just need to be sent away type bad. And our main character is basically in love with her older sister's boyfriend slash fiance which is so like taboo and so bad. I should put a disclaimer that the author mentioned in the beginning that there is no cheating in the book. So if like that's something you're worried about, you wouldn't really have to worry about with that situation. But listen, I of course had to add a little bit of dark romance to my summer TBR, okay? I can't go through summer without a little bit of a toxic love story. Sue me. Okay, and then we have made it to the last book on this TBR and that is Death Note. This is the Black Edition and it is the first and second volume. I had to like look around the book because I wasn't sure. I'm so excited to read this. Basically the main character is an amazing student with great prospects. Then he ends up finding the Death Note which is a notebook dropped by a death god. Any human whose name is written in the book dies and now Light has vowed to use the power of the Death Note to rid the world of evil. And yeah I'm just really excited to read it. I I've never read a manga before, but I feel like I'm gonna honestly enjoy it. That was it for the books that I'm going to read this summer. That is my summer TBR, obviously subject to change because again, I'm a mood reader. I literally just pick up whatever I feel like in the moment. So I might pick up books that are not on this TBR, of course. Make sure you check out The Spectre Queen by Jenny Elder Moke and Like Other Girls by Britta London. If you guys want any more information on these two books, you can go down below into my description description and click the link that'll be there for you and thank you again to Disney Books for sponsoring this video. If you guys like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and if you watched all the way to this point make sure to leave down the little red kissy face emoji. I'll put it down on the screen because I've been obsessed with this emoji recently. I don't know why. I've been using it like unironically too. Like it's just such a cute emoji. Anyways that's it from me. I hope you all have a blessed hot girl summer and i will see you all in my next video Mwah. bye east and the west i'm racking up on my breath uh, power on me i'm feeling just like a tesla too much tree the smoke is making my chest hurt girl on me i'm thinking i should arrest her hey i'm thinking i should arrest all night long she putting me to the test got a lot on i'm trying to take out the rest